Hi everyone, so today I wanted to share with you uh, one of my more difficult edits that I've had to do in Olympus Workspace. And this is an image I posted on Instagram uh, comparing Workspace and Lightroom, but today I'm just going to show you how I edit the uh, Workspace part of it. And what I want to get to is from this to this. Uh, and this can be done fairly easily in Workspace, albeit a little painfully slow, but it can be done. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll go back to the original RAW file. And like I said, uh, what we're seeing here is the original file out of the camera with the camera settings applied, for example, in this case, monotone. So we can go in and change the picture mode back to natural. And that brought the color back. But I did apply several other settings. Like I also applied a plus four highlights, minus four shadow. I also did some uh, gradations. I shot in low key. And I may have applied some other settings. So rather than uh, look for every little setting that you've made in camera to get that awful image like I did, uh, I created a batch file to just reset the image all back to default settings and auto white balance, etc. Just like if we had uh, taken the picture in full auto on the camera. And if you don't know how to work with batch files or do batch file processing, you know, I like to call them presets, but uh, I, I've saved all of these batch files onto my website that you can download for free. And what I'm going to use now is what I call full reset. And We'll just click the little disk icon here, load batch processing file, and I have one here called full reset. And now, if we had had the camera in auto or program mode, this is the image we would have seen imported into workspace rather than the monotone image from before. Now this image still needs some work, right? Um, what I'd like to do is really bring out the textures and, and shading that she has in her fur here. I want to bring out her eyes a little more. And uh, I need to straighten it just a little bit. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do the low hanging fruit first, right? Let's just straighten the image a little bit. Uh, and the way I like to straighten images, I'll just use the crop tool. And let me bring this down to her eyes because I like the eyes to be level. And you can see it's just this eye on the uh, right, her left eye is a little bit higher than her right eye. So we'll just do a slight tilt. If I like that, that should do it. And then uh, I drag this line down so I could see. But let me go ahead and give that a second. <laughs> I'm watching this little uh, hourglass up here to finish. Okay, now I should be able to open this back up. Good. And let's go back to the edit palette. And now let's let's try and bring back some of the details so that we can see a little bit more of what's going on in our fur here. And the easiest way to do that, I think the start is let's work with the highlights and shadows. Um, I'm going to bring the shadows up just a little bit because her uh, fur is a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to do a plus one. And I think that's good. We'll wait for this hourglass to finish to see the final image. Okay. And now I want to bring the shadows up because, or I'm sorry, the midtones here because right here and right above her eyes and sort of around her head and on the sides. I want to I want to bring those out a little bit more as well. So I'm going to add about a plus five. Yeah, that looks good. Now, of course, it brightened up the rest of the image, but we will work on that later. Um, again, we'll wait for this hourglass to finish. So now we're a little closer to the image that I want to get. And again, this is all personal preference, but uh, this, is, this is what I'm doing today. Now let's, um, let's add some clarity. 
And clarity is just another form of contrast because I want to increase the contrast here all in her fur. So, and I like to just go about halfway and see how that looks and then I can increase or decrease it from there. So we'll wait for this again here, the hourglass. Okay, good. And now I like that. Now there's a little more contrast here in the sides and in her fur, etc. And I'm just going to add a little dehaze because the image looks a little bit soft. Because clarity doesn't really increase sharpness at all. Neither does dehaze, but let's try, let's go a little bit lighter on the dehaze. Maybe right around 22. But it does perceptually look a little sharper, right? Okay, good. Now, this is looking a lot better to me, or at least a lot closer to what I want. Now, let's just uh, crank up the sharpness. And I'm just going to do a plus two. It's a very subtle change, plus one and plus two, so I don't mind just cranking it to plus two sometimes. But I only have to be a little bit careful because sometimes when you add too much sharpness and if you're shooting at a high ISO, it can really make the grain pattern look very blotchy. But this was shot at, uh, looks like ISO something. Let me see, ISO 400. So there's not a lot of grain, so to speak, uh, that the sharpening would mess up the out of focus areas too much. All right, I like this. Now, the next thing I want to do is I really want to brighten up her eyes a little bit because they're, they're still a little bit too dark in here. Um, and since I also, because I brighten the image, it looks a little bit desaturated too. Uh, so let me go back and I'm going to crank up the saturation to plus two. Yeah, that helps. We'll wait for this hourglass. All right. That's a little better. Uh, maybe a little more. Let me try a vivid picture mode. Yeah. It's subtle, but I like it. Just very subtle differences. All right. Yeah, that's looking good. Now, like I said, I want to kind of come back to her eyes and brighten those up a little bit. Now, Workspace does not have a brush tool like you see in a lot of other photo editors. So a little trick that I do is I use the clone stamp tool because thankfully it does have this. And what this does is it copies one area of the picture to another, hence the name cloning. So let me just demonstrate that. So we're going to click the clone stamp tool on. I'm going to pick a larger brush size, somewhere around there. And then to select an area that you want to clone, you hit the Alt key on your keyboard. And I'm using a Windows computer. And then right click on the mouse and then it'll make a little circle. Now anything in this circle will be cloned over to this area in parallel. So let me show you what I mean. Let me clone over here her sweater. And if I click my mouse over here, you can see that it, it cloned exactly what's over here. But if I drag this all the way, you can see that this this cloning is in parallel, or the, the, the clone part parallels wherever I brush. So I have to be a little bit careful. Be conscious of that when you're brushing larger areas. If you're just brushing small areas, it's okay. The other problem with this kind of cloning is that the circle or this brush is a little bit too hard, right? So we want to soften that brush up a little bit. So let's blur it 100%. Uh, that's what I like to work with. 
And let's brush one more time, see what we get. And you can see that's a lot softer. And that's, that's the brush that I'm going to use. Uh, the other thing here is the opacity. Right now it's brushing in 100%, so anything I clone is going to cover 100% the area that I'm, I'm cloning. So if I crank this down to, say, 20% and I brush... Oops, I lost my... Uh, I hit the Alt key by mistake. All right, let's try this again. Now when I'm brushing, you can see it's it's still cloning the area, but it, you can see through underneath. So it's really just the transparency is what opacity is. All right, now let's reset everything and work on our eyes now that we understand what the clone stamp does and some of the tuning that we can do for it. So I'm going to pick a smaller brush size, say about 50. And I'm going to leave the blur at 100% and the opacity at 100%. Now what I want to clone into her eyes is the same eye color that she has. And her eyes are sort of a brownish color with a little red. So I'm just going to look for that in the image, a similar air, uh, color. And fortunately, you know, there is a lot of brown in this image that I can pull from. If she had green eyes, I would have a little more trouble trying to find something to clone in. But usually most images you can find another area of the image that has a color that you want to clone. Uh, so I'm going to pick sort of, let's pick right here. So I'm going to hit the Alt key, right click on the mouse, and now I have the little circle here that's going to be the cloning area. And let me zoom in a little bit, like so. This is a 50% zoom, so I can see a little better what I'm doing. And I'm just going to start to brush in like this, that brownish color. Yeah, that looks good. And I'll brush in on this side. Maybe a little more. Now, if I brush over the same area again, it's going to double the opacity. So instead of being effectively from 20%, it'll be more like a 40% opacity. And I'll show you what I mean. There, that's good. Let me do a little bit more on the sides here. And as you practice with this brush, you'll get a feel for what happens when you start brushing areas. That looks pretty good. Now, the other thing I want to do with her eyes is she has a nice specular here in her right eye, but in her left eye, there's a specular there, but it's not quite as uh, strong. So I want to increase this. So all I have to do is I'm going to pick a little smaller brush. Let's go about half that, maybe down to about 20-ish. Yeah. And I'm going to Alt and right click on a white spot like so. And now you'll see the hourglass popped up. And what it's going to do is apply the last clone stamp that we did. It disappeared here for a second, but it'll come back. See, so now that the hourglass has disappeared, it's applied that particular clone. Uh, so now I'm just going to brush in right here. Just make that specular a little bit stronger. And there's a little bit right here. There. We'll add a little bit more. There, I like that. All right, good. Now, if I want to start over, I can click the reset button right here and it's going to reset everything I did. Uh, same thing if I hit undo. Um, it's going to reset all of the brushes, not just the last one we did. So you have to be careful. Let me reapply those. So just be aware of that. When you hit reset or undo, it resets all of the cloning that you did, not just the last one that you did. Let's see. Oh, it looks like I lost the speculars that I drew in. 
little bit of a glitch there. So let's draw that back in. All right, good. All right, let's back out. Let's look at it. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to click over back to the edit panel so it applies those uh, clones that we did, clone stamping. And it's it's slow, I know. Like I said, I'm waiting for this. But there, there we have it. All right, so let's compare this to the original RAW file that we started with again. And you can see that it's a pretty dramatic difference and we were able to save this image, so to speak. Uh, and that's it. So again, um, you know, you can download that full uh, batch processing file, full reset from my website. And, uh, you know, there's a little trick that I use for the clone stamping tool to brighten up eyes, typically like in my girl dog here. Uh, and you have to be very careful with that and it takes a little practice, but uh, you'll get there. And, you know, if you have any other uh, questions or you want to see me process any kind of particular image, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, contact me through my website and I'll be happy to give it a try. So as always, thanks again for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.